Formula One is all about winning, yet for most it ends in failure. Countless teams have come and gone over the years, some disappearing mid-season, never to be seen again. In the early decades of the World Championship, teams came and went regularly, so we're going to set aside the mid-season demise of big names such as BRM, which ran out of steam in 1977, and Shadow, a race-winning outfit that dropped out in 1980, and focus on the last 40 years. Let us know if we've missed any of your favourites in the comments, and please prove that you're one of F1's winners by hitting subscribe so you don't miss anything from the race. The little French AGS team, founded by sometime Formula 3 racer Henri Julien, came into F1 in 1986, but was sold to Cyril de Rouve after the 1988 season. AGS had big ambitions, and even had its own test track thanks to its facility based at the Le Luc circuit in the south of France, but cash was always a struggle, and it was a miracle that the team even started the 1991 season. Gabriele Tarquini performed heroics with a B-spec of the AGS JH25, an evolution of the uncompetitive 1990 car to finish 8th in Phoenix and make the grid three times in the opening four races. But after that, he didn't qualify again, with the second car, driven by Stefan Johansson, then Fabrizio Barbazza, never even making the grid. But AGS was running on a shoestring and was sold to Patrizio Cantu and Gabriele Raffinelli early in the season. Despite a new car, the JH27, appearing late on, AGS closed its doors with two races remaining. Talks of a merger with LaRousse, which had been discussed before, were quickly shot down, and AGS disappeared from Formula 1, although its facility continues to run F1 machinery for arrive and drive experience days at the Leloup track. Scuderia Italia Scuderia Italia's switch from Dallara to Lola chassis for 1993 was supposed to mark the beginning of a glorious partnership that would take it to the front in F1. Instead, it turned Scuderia Italia from a handy midfield team into a back marker with a rushed and undercooked car. With five times Grand Prix winner Michele Alboreto and reigning Formula 3000 champion Luca Badoa driving, expectations were high but the Ferrari-powered Lola T9330 was woefully off the pace. The car was a sound enough platform, but had nowhere near enough development time and had an estimated 30% of the downforce of the front runners, not to mention a lack of active suspension and traction control. Badoa managed its best finish of 7th at Imola, but despite sponsorship from Chesterfield, the lack of results led to financial questions and Ferrari was unwilling to continue to supply engines to the struggling team in 1994. Team boss Beppe Lucchini pulled the plug before the final two flyaway races. Although there was a merger with the Minno Minardi team for 1994 that lasted for two years, this was effectively the end for Scuderia Italia in Formula 1. Force India The former Jordan team had already gone through one mid-season change of identity when it switched from Midland to Spiker in the closing stages of the 2006 season. But while the team that participated in the last race before the 2018 summer break in Hungary and the first after it in Belgium was essentially the same, Force India had turned into racing points. Technically, it was considered to be a new team, as the new ownership, a consortium led by Lawrence Stroll, had acquired the assets of Force India, staff included, rather than the team itself. As a result, all of the first half of the season points were lost, and racing points started from zero. But other than the new logo and a blank championship slate, nothing had changed. The team was to all intents and purposes the same, but it did benefit from more stable cash flow to fund its big ambitions. Onyx. Founded by the flamboyant Jean-Pierre Van Rossem to promote his Moneytron investment company and run by Mike Earle, Onyx had an impressive first season in 1989, with Stefan Johansson taking a remarkable podium finish at the Portuguese Grand Prix. But problems were on the horizon. After the failure to land the costly Porsche engine deal that eventually and disastrously went to Arrows, the money started to dry up before Onyx was sold to Peter Monteverdi, who moved the team to his native Switzerland. Onyx, which became known as Monteverdi in 1990 although retained the Onyx name on entry lists, lasted just 10 races of that season, running on a tiny budget and failed to score a point before disappearing from the grid. 
Both cars failed to qualify for that final race at the Hungara Ring, which was an ignominious end for a once promising operation. Andrea Moda Owned by Italian businessman Andrea Sassetti, Andrea Moda was formed after buying the assets of the Coloni operation that closed at the end of the 1991 season. Nick Worth's Simtech organisation was engaged to design a car, but as an interim step, the team attempted to race the old Colonies at the start of 1992. It was excluded from the first event of the season before pre-qualifying thanks to the failure to pay the $100,000 guarantee required from all new teams, with Sassetti arguing it was a continuation of Colony and therefore didn't have to. In the end, the team had to press on as an all-new entry, with its new car finally appearing at the third race of the season at Interlagos. It was the start of a season in which Andrea Moda was rarely out of the headlines, never for good reasons. It all came to a head at Spa, with Sassetti arrested in the paddock before the team was banned from F1 for bringing the sport into disrepute. Sassetti attempted to return, challenging the ruling in the Court of Appeal, and even attempting to lodge an entry for 1993. But after missing the final four races of 1992, Andrea Moda was done with F1. Or rather, F1 was done with Andrea Moda. Super Aguri After four races of its third Formula One campaign in 2008, Super Aguri dropped off the grid, despite some heroic performances the year before. Former F1 driver Aguri Suzuki's team was formed in 2006 using cars built around the 2002 Arrows A23 with Honda support to allow protégé Takuma Sato, who had been dropped by the works team in favour of Rubens Barrichello, to continue in F1. But Super Aguri started to hit trouble thanks to non-payment of sponsorship. A sale to Magma Group, announced in March 2008, along with confirmation Sato and Anthony Davidson would continue as its drivers, appeared to shore up the future. But disputes over agreeing payment schedules meant the sale was never completed. Super Aguri was prevented from accessing the Istanbul Park circuit for the fifth race of the season before being put into administration. Attempts to find an alternative buyer failed, and a team that showed so much promise vanished for good, with many of its assets being sold to Franz Hilmer, who later attempted to enter F1 under the Brabham name in 2010. Forty Corsa Guido Forti's Forti Corsa team had enjoyed success in Formula 3000 when it stepped up to Formula 1 with the assistance of finance from driver Pedro Diniz. Forti picked up the assets of the defunct Fon Metal team, which had dropped off the grid in late 1992 to help facilitate this. With a new car that carried over some of the design cues of Fon Metal's GR02 chassis and overseen by Sergio Rinland, the first season in 1995 was a struggle with an overweight, out-of-date car. Then, the financial rug was pulled out from under Forti Corsa by Deniz opting to move to Ligier for 1996. This left Forti struggling financially, despite the fact that the FGO3 chassis showed real signs of promise in the hands of Andrea Montemini and Luca Padoa. But the financial situation got worse. Ahead of the Spanish Grand Prix, a sale of 51% of the team to Shannon Racing, an Italian-funded organisation based in Ireland, was agreed. The reliveried cars failed to qualify in Spain and didn't finish in both Canada and France before making only a token effort to make the grid at Silverstone. The team set up at Hockenheim but didn't run and ultimately closed down amid disputes over ownership. Simtech Nick Worth's Simtech company had already produced a car for the unsuccessful Andrea Moda team when it decided to enter F1 in its own right in 1994. Powered by a Ford HB engine, the Simtech S941 was a great looking car that struggled for pace during a first season overshadowed by the tragic loss of driver Roland Ratzenberger. Having made it to the end of the season with a rotating cast of drivers alongside David Brabham, Simtech started 1995 with a new car, the S951. Now powered by the Ford ED engine, it made a promising start to the year with Benetton refugee Jos Verstappen turning in a starring role in the Argentinian Grand Prix by running as high as sixth before retiring. But behind the scenes, the team's debts were growing, not helped by the loss of a major sponsor. After contesting the first five races of the season, then missing the Canadian Grand Prix, 
both Simtek Grand Prix and its Simtek Research parent company went into administration with combined debts of $9 million. Attempts to revive the team by finding a buyer failed, and Simtek vanished. Arrows Arrows was a remarkably resilient team, as its unenviable record of 382 Formula 1 starts without a victory proves. But it finally ran out of steam after 12 races of 2002. It was a long, drawn-out demise for the cash-strapped team, but at one point it seemed Arrows was on the brink of being saved by investment from Red Bull, which funded driver Enrique Bernaldi's place in the team. Its dire financial situation was laid bare by court proceedings ahead of the British Grand Prix. There, team boss Tom Walkinshaw unsuccessfully attempted to get an injunction that had been granted to Morgan Grenfell, which owned 45% of the team, lifted, so the Red Bull investment could go ahead. The team made the grid at Silverstone, but made only a token attempt to qualify for the next race at Manicor. After the next race at Hockenheim, with attempts to sell to investors including Red Bull and former BAR team founder Craig Pollock unsuccessful, Arrows disappeared from F1 for good. Brabham Brabham won six world championships and 35 races in its glory days, but in 1992, the team founded by the legendary Jack Brabham, but no longer owned by him, vanished, with five races remaining. Brabham had already disappeared from F1 once, in 1988, as Bernie Eccleston's focus had long since grown beyond simply running a team. It re-emerged under new ownership in 1989, but was a shadow of the powerhouse it once was. By 1992, it had lost its Yamaha engine supply to Jordan and was struggling on with the Brabham BT60B, an updated version of its previous season's car, powered by Judd engines. The car rarely qualified in the hands of Eric van der Poel, Giovanna Amati and Damon Hill, and by Hungary, Brabham was down to just a single entry for Hill, which he remarkably managed to get onto the grid in 21st, going on to finish 11th, having been lapped four times. And that was that. Owner Middlebridge Group had struggled to fund the team for some time, and by 1992 it was running on a shoestring and unable to make repayments to finance company Landhurst Leasing. There were attempts to revive Brabham again, but eventually its assets were sold off after Landhurst went into receivership amid legal troubles and the team was no more. Well, that's our 10 teams that didn't make it to the end of the year, so let us know if you think there are any better stories we missed out. If you'd like to hear more stories of F1 failure, and success for that matter, and haven't done so already, do remember to hit subscribe, and if you like these 10 tales of disaster, don't forget to give us a thumbs up.